So welcome, everybody. Uh, today, we are going to cover the secrets to building and delivering amazing apps at a scale. My name is Javier Garza. I'm, um, for the past 15 years, I've been working with some of the largest companies worldwide to help them um, optimize their apps and websites for, for speed. And basically, if I have to describe myself, I can say I'm a geek who likes to share the things I learn, I cares for the environment, and lives, loves to do sports and adventure. I work as a developer evangelist for, in the Akamai developer relations team. Akamai, in case you don't know, it's a Hawaiian word that means smart. And um, basically, we have the biggest content delivery network in the world with servers all around the world. All right? Uh, this talk is all about you know, creating amazing apps. So before we start, I'm going to spend one or two minutes explaining what is an app so everybody, we are on the same page. You know, um, a few days ago, you know, I was with a few of you in Barcelona in the Akamai HMEA forum, and I got to know Tim Berners-Lee, which is known as the father of the internet or the web. And basically, the web is basically a technology from the early 90s, very simple technology that what allows to do is a browser can get information very easily from, from a web server. But today, you know, browsers are not the browsers anymore. It's just um, sometimes you have an app, and a single page app, for example, or a native app like an iOS or Android. And the server itself is not the web server anymore. We have usually most modern architectures. They have an API that gets the content from data store. And the static assets like images, you know, they are usually delivered from an object store. Um, the communication between the client and the server usually starts with the DNS resolution. And once you resolve the name and you connect to an IP, you know, that happens over TCP or UDP, which is the transport protocol. Once the connection is established, you know, we switch to something called HTTP, which is the um, application layer protocol where all the information goes back and forth. All right? And um, normally, that communication is HTTP over TCP. And for the new protocol, HTTP 3, that is going to come probably next year, you know, it will go over UDP. All right? So that's the basics. Now that we are on the same page, let's go to the secrets of building and delivering amazing apps at a scale. Um, so I'm going to share with you 14 things that you need to implement you know, to create amazing apps. And that's, those 14 recommendations go on to uh, three different layers. The first one is the front end. The front end is basically the part of the app that runs on the mobile device and the end users interact with. The back end is basically the part of the infrastructure where you have your API servers, your web servers, application server, and so on. And then you have the network in between that connects the back end and the front end. Um, the part of the network that is close to the back end is known as the first mile. The one close to the front end to the end user is called the, the last mile. And the one in between in the middle is called the middle mile, or the magic black box called as the internet. All right? So we are going to start with the front end. In the front end, I'm going to list five things that you should do if you want to make an amazing app. The first thing is you should start with a beautiful interface. You know, people in general, human beings, you know, they love aesthetical, they love beautiful things. That's why we look at the orange colors of a sunset, or we spend a lot of money on a work of art. So the first thing we should do is start with a something that is aesthetically nice. Um, you can, for example, start by looking at the apps and the app stores that you like, or, for example, things that apps that you use very common, very, very often, and take the things that you like from those apps and write them down, and also apply best practices for app design, for example, you know, taking, um, checking the uh, graphic design, using fonts with curved, curved edges, you know, using images that are created from their specific websites that provide that, and using interfaces like a UI that are simple, that are intuitive, that people don't have to learn it. So that's the third characteristic. 
The second one is accessible. You know, it is your responsibility, you know, to provide an app that people who are impaired can use it. You know, it may be vision, hearing, or mobility. But it's many people who design an app, they leave this for the later stages of design. But it's much easier if you plan upfront to, to implement those. And there are actually standards that you can, you can do to, to be compliant. Fast and responsive. This is, for me, the most important thing. I want an app that is fast, that I can interact all the time, and it doesn't lag in performance. Some things you can implement here is, for example, caching. You can cache at the app. You know, there is a local cache that you can use. And my recommendation will be everything that you present to the end user, you know, store it in a local cache. And for example, that way, you know, when the app starts and you need to do the connection to the server that takes a while, you can use that local cache to present the app right away instantaneously to the end user. Because nobody likes to wait and wait for an app to start. And um, also, network awareness is the number four. Network awareness is a very important thing. So you should monitor the network all the time. And not only if the network is available, but also the bandwidth that you have available. And your, uh, your application should adapt to the network conditions. For example, let's say I'm in a train and I'm trying to send some data to the server. You know, the app should be smart enough to tell you, I'm sorry, you know, you are currently offline. You cannot send the data, but I'm going to queue it. And the moment you are back online, you know, it will send the data. And you should also use the cache that you have to allow users to interact with the app, even when there is no network connections and you cannot connect to the server. And secure. Security is not an option anymore. It's something that everybody should do. You know, the last thing you want to do is having um, your users' data have a data breach or you know, some, some attack on your servers. So that's very important. One thing that you need to do is, is super easy, is to have secure end-to-end -end communication between the client app and the servers. And not only secure, but you need to ensure you use at least TLS 1.2, or better, better yet is TLS 1.3, which offers better security than 1.2, and also is faster network establishment. Also, you know, pay attention to the certificates that you use, that you have ciphers that are secure. For example, there is something called perfect forward secrecy that makes man in the middle attacks hard. And it's very simple to implement. Just ensure you have ciphers that are secure and so on. All right, so that's from the front end. The second part is the back end. Again, in the back end, we are going to explain five things that you should implement. The first one is a distributed architecture. With this means, you know, when you build and design your architecture, ensure you have several data centers. They are geographically dispersed. And your end users can connect to the one that is closest to them, so it's faster. And at the same time, if one goes down, you know, everything should keep going um, without problems. So you can um, be up and ready. This helps on both performance and fault tolerance. Second thing is auto scaling. You know, you need to plan an infrastructure that scales with the traffic, that not also goes up with the traffic automatically without you having to start, you know, AWS instances and so on. But also, it descales as the traffic uh, is low. That will, in that way, you can save money. And an easy way to implement this is by using a content delivery network, for example. The third thing is performance. You know, same as uh, you want to ensure the performance is fast and the um, front end, you need to do that on the back end as well. And performance in the back end translates at the same time to performance on the front end. And um, one thing that you can do in this case is, you know, bring a performance culture in your organization. So by including many things, and one recommendation is, for example, adopting a performance baseline within your DevOps tools. So when you release code, ensure that the code you release is always fast. If you can put some tool, for example, in the deployment pipeline, that if the code affects the performance, it will never deploy. All right? So it's called a performance baseline. All right. The fourth thing is continuous monitoring. You know, everybody 
knows this already, but not only you should not not only monitor on the back end, but also monitor at the same time on the front end. For example, using real user monitoring. In this way, whenever by using both combined, you can detect when a deployment will affect the end user performance, and then you can roll back easily. And together with the monitoring comes DevOps automation. You know, DevOps automation is something that is very in. Everybody is doing it right now. So if you, have not, if you are not doing it today, you should do it, because it saves time and, um, and allows you to do more things with less people. And basically, with the DevOps automation, you can automate things like, for example, from the monitoring. If there is something that goes wrong, you can, for example, enable um, an alert that goes to a chat system like a Slack and allow the people simply by replying with a chat message, roll back a deployment. And that way, you know, if it's 3 a.m. in the morning, you don't have to log in. Just using a cell phone, you can do something really quick and, uh, and react very quickly. All right, so the last section is the network. For the network, I'm going to share with you four things you can do on the network to, um, to create amazing apps at a scale. The first one is a distributed DNS. You know, DNS is basically the first thing that apps or web, web users need to do before connecting to a web server. So by having a distributed DNS infrastructure, you can improve performance and availability as well. And in fact, most of the um, hacker attacks that we see today try to, to go through the DNS because it's an easy way uh, to bring down a whole app, for example, or a company. The second thing is the protocol optimization. You know, probably all of you use HTTP 1.1. Now we have HTTP 2.0, you know, which I'm very familiar with. And just by switching the protocol, you get many benefits. Like, for example, binary framing, you know, header compression. You get the streaming, multiplexing, and server push. And that's very simple to, to optimize. And with HTTP 3, which has been already um, um, a proof of standard, at least the name, you know, the protocol will go over UDP, which is it will help um, when there is packet loss and, and connectivity issues. All right. The fourth thing that we have um, is latency optimization. Actually, that's the number three. Um, round trip makes a big difference. So if you are, latency is a physical limitation of nature. There is nothing you can do about it. The far away you are from the server, the slower the communication is going to, to happen. And to give you an example, you know, let's say I have a, my server, I have a AWS data center in Las Vegas. So if we have end users in San Francisco, that will mean around 70 milliseconds latency. If you are in New York, you know, it will be 77 milliseconds. In Sydney, it will be 155. And if you are in India, in Bangalore, for example, you will have a whooping of 20, 228 milliseconds latency. But latency doesn't mean much to people. So let's see how this applies if you want to, to load the average web page you know, over a fast, fast mobile connection. San Francisco, that will be three seconds. New York will be nine seconds. Sydney, 17 seconds. And Bangalore, 26 seconds. That's nine seconds, all right? Nine seconds feel like a long time. So imagine somebody in Bangalore waiting three times that just to see the content appear on the mobile phone. So that's um, a big problem that we have today, and it's very hard to solve. Well, it's hard and simple at the same time. The solution is just to put the server very close to the end user so you don't have the latency in between. And once you do that, for example, you will see the latency will be around 9 milliseconds everywhere. And that translates to basically 1.5 seconds from San Francisco, New York, and basically everywhere. You just remove the, the round trips of the internet, which with nobody who likes to wait more than two seconds today. today. You know, usually if your website takes more than two seconds, you pro probably lose some users. All right? So that goes to the last, last section on the network, is the edge compute. You know, what we saw there to, to put the server close to the end user will allow you to do certain things 
like for example, um, do edge compute. This is a um, keyword that you are going to hear a lot in the next five years. So we have been using cloud computing and until now. You know, it's very popular with AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and so on. And the next thing in technology is edge compute. And what it means is basically running logic that usually is too slow to run on a mobile device because you have a low-end mobile device, or it is too slow to run it on a web server that is far away, to run it in a server that is very close to the end users. And let's do something. Can you do me a favor and uh, take your mobile phone and do, uh, show it to me? Do like this with your mobile phone. <laughs> All right, cool. So that's what I thought. You, know, you guys are in the one top percent of the world in terms of mobile computing power. <laughs> and actually, I bet that if we take all the mobile computing power that we have here in this conference, it will surpass many small countries together. All right? So there is something that we take for granted because we have fast devices. It's, for example, resizing images on a mobile phone. You know, resizing images on a mobile phone that is slow, like a low-end devices, takes several seconds. And um, one thing you can do with edge compute is, for example, uh, when the edge server that is close to end user gets a request from that low-end device, it will find out what kind of device it is, and it will deliver the right image for the screen device so you don't have to resize and you don't have to wait for the, for the mobile CPU. And also, you don't have to go to, to far away server and grab the image maybe that is exactly for that device. So that's what is called edge compute. You can do it with images. You can do it with many other things. But it's basically allowed to run some logic very close to, to the, where the users are located. All right, so that's it. I'm going to summarize the secrets to building and delivering amazing app at a scale. Basically, you have to optimize on the front end, back end, and network. On the front end, you need to start with a beautiful interface that is accessible, fast and responsive, that is aware of the network, and that is secure. On the back end, use distributed architecture that auto scales, that performs, that is continuously monitored using DevOps best practices. And on the network, you know, ensure you have a distributed DNS, optimize the protocol and the latency, and if you can, use edge compute. All right, so that's it. You know, um, come. We are on the booth 1016, which is right there, you know, very close to here. Uh, we have um, a raffle for an Apple Watch Series 4 every day at 4, and I will be there if you have any questions about Akamai. Thank you.